Recent research unveiled that 93% of travelers are willing to cut back on some parts of their trip to save money. This is hardly surprising. The desire for cheaper travel is what led to the success of low-cost airlines and budget accommodations like hostels. What is surprising is that only 29% are willing to cut back on experiences, and food is at the top of their list. Travel in 2023 is all about authentic, once-in-a-lifetime memorable adventures that bring you closer to the local culture. Tourists want to enjoy sights, places, and establishments that they can never find at home, restaurants unsurprisingly being one of those. Today, we want to explore what the growth of culinary tourism means for the travel business overall and what opportunities it brings. is one of the most culturally significant things. Just like Aboriginal traditions or natural and historic sites, the culture of preparing and eating food is unique to every region in the world and reflects the region's way of life. That's why today's tourists often shape their itinerary around different culinary experiences. Traveling to a different part of the world or even your own country allows you to taste food from ingredients that may not be available at home or are prepared in a distinctive style. Along with tastings, there are often additional gastronomical experiences like visiting local markets, taking cooking classes, going on winery or brewery tours, and attending thematic food festivals. But even if there are no plans to attend any food-specific experiences, many would still consider it obligatory to try essential local foods from tacos in Mexico City to fish and chips in London. In recent years, gastronomical tourism entered the mainstream thanks to social media and culinary content on TV and streaming websites. Travel bloggers and regular people have been sharing about the meals they've tasted and providing tips and tricks on finding the best local places that used to be hidden from a tourist's eye. It not only became easier to find alternatives to the usual franchise eateries, but food experiences alone became a significant attraction. In 2017, the video of Turkish chef Nusret Goce went viral for the unique way he added seasonings to the meat, turning him into an internet sensation. Oh! Wow, wow. D didn't know you liked salt that much. Today, people travel to his steakhouses to compare the real experience to the image they saw online. As another example, in 2022, a bakery in New York invented a circular croissant that became an instant hit and had people waiting in long lines to taste it, making it a Manhattan attraction. As for TV, such shows as Parts Unknown, Somebody Feed Phil, and Gordon Ramsay's Uncharted have massive success and give insight into culinary culture all over the world. So, it's not hard to believe that visitors spend 25% of their travel budget on food and beverages. And this means that the promotion of gastronomic tourism provides huge economic opportunities to tourism destinations and local businesses. Touring companies and destination management companies have massive opportunities to capitalize on the food tourism trend. Look at secret food tours. It's a global touring company operating in over 50 cities. They create food tours to highlight the best the destination has to offer. They also have a handy booking platform and can organize a private tour on request. The key to their success is not only the comfortable search and booking process, but also the fact that they collaborate with local spots and handpick their guides, aiming to create unique itineraries not found on most maps. Each destination has unique culinary traditions interwoven with its history and culture. There's a growing interest in finding the origin of popular meals and drinks and tasting the correct version. Pizza in Naples, sushi in Japan, paella in Spain, duck pate in France are just some of the examples that attract people all over the world. 
There's always a story to be told and people to tell them. One of the main appeals to food tours is not just the taste, but socialization. Travelers want to talk to locals, learn from them, and live a day in their shoes. So it makes practical and economic sense to collaborate with local chefs and food enthusiasts for classes and excursions. Another important step is to put the tours where people can find them. Platforms for travel experiences have dozens of culinary tours in their proposition. Get your guide, Tour Radar, TripAdvisor, Kluke, and Airbnb have prominent sections with food experiences ranging from fruit markets to cooking classes, pub crawls, or even truffle hunting experiences with tasting and wine. The more unique, authentic, and distinctive your culinary adventure is, the more people can find it and book it on those apps. But tour organizing is just one way to attract gastronomic travelers. For instance, airlines are in the food business too. The complaints about in-flight food are abundant, but the praises are just as prevalent. Research says that the quality of airline catering is the key factor in repeatedly flying the same airline. And it's one of the things that distinguish full-service carriers from low-cost ones. While the latter ones rarely provide any catering at all or ask you to pay for it separately, traditional airlines challenge themselves to create flavorful and high-quality food accompanied by restaurant-grade serving experience. In 2022, Indian airline Vistara even organized a special in-flight food event to celebrate their anniversary of long-haul operations. On flights from Delhi to Frankfurt, London, and Paris, travelers were served famous traditional delicacies for the whole month of August. The trend towards offering passengers more authentic dishes instead of the usual chicken or fish is growing. Japan Airlines has both Western and Japanese menus, the latter of which includes staple dishes and drinks you can expect to try in Japan. Indonesian carrier CityLink also has many local options, allowing you to enjoy the cultural dishes before even arriving in Bali. The number of people who consider in-flight meals before booking a flight have led to the appearance of such websites and blogs as in-flight feed and airplane food snaps. While the TikTok hashtags, hashtag airplane food and hashtag plane food review have many of millions of views. This possesses an opportunity for flight booking websites and aggregators to pay more attention to meals offered by airlines and help people review and compare them the same way such services as SeatGuru or Seat Maestro help choosing your flight seat. Food experiences can also bring success to hotels. Many hotels today try to wow guests with chef residencies, food events, or unique dining experiences. The Ritz-Carlton has a variety of food-related programs across its many locations, such as the Independence Day celebration with barbecue buffet and fireworks, special lavender-themed menu during lavender bloom season, and an outdoor dining experience with market-style atmosphere in its Thai location. But many smaller, boutique-style hotels can also join the trend just by designing conceptual dining opportunities. Aragon House in Athens is a self-dubbed foodie hotel. Inside the hotel, there's a market where local artisans and chefs bring the freshest produce and foods for guests to purchase and enjoy on the spot. Lining the side of the market is a vertical orchard where seasonal herbs are grown and harvested. A hotel's history can also influence the menu. The Blue Lion in England serves classic Yorkshire dishes, and enjoying them in a relaxing pub setting can truly take you back in time. Hotels adjacent to vineyards for wine tasting, or on oyster farms where you can fish on site, or farms where you can forage also provide unique food experiences. All in all, when considering how to elevate a hotel's culinary game, make sure that it plays on strong parts of the property's concept, history, location, 
and explore what foods might make the stay truly remarkable. While tourism in general is considered an annoyance to the locals, contributing to overcrowding and damaged environments, food tourism actually has a few positive sides. Buying food from local restaurants, farmers, or street vendors strengthens local communities. Besides, by bringing less money to globalizing chain restaurants, tourists can help destinations preserve their culinary traditions and build up small businesses, which in turn helps keep unemployment rates low. At the same time, there are potential drawbacks. Communities might change their cuisine to better suit the tastes of tourists, plus the prices for meals and services can increase, forcing locals to go to less popular places. The risks will always exist, which is why it's so important for local governments and businesses to protect culinary heritage and educate tourists on how they can minimize the negative impact. Thank you for watching the video. Subscribe and leave a like if you want to see more of similar content. We'll see you in the next video.